Hello, this is Julie Lerman. I wanted to play a little bit with the new Enum support that we're getting in Entity Framework 5. So I've taken a solution that was the final solution of my most recent Pluralsight course. That one was demonstrating the new migration support that was added in Entity Framework 4.3. And while I was doing that project, I inevitably ran across some properties where I really wished I'd had some Enum support. So now that I've got access to Entity Framework 5 and Visual Studio 11, which gives me access to .NET 4.5 because the Enum support is part of the core API for Entity Framework that's inside of .NET 4.5, now I can finally take advantage of that. So the solution that I ended up with is just a simple one with a console app, a data layer where my context lives, and a couple of domain classes, one for alias, one for tweets, and some other ones. So I'm going to focus in this alias class. What I want to do is fix up this experience and rating property that I have here, and those were those were the ones where I said, oh, I wish I had enums, but instead I used a string for experience and an int for rating, and then it's up to me to kind of specify what they mean. So where I'll begin is to just do some .NET coding in here, and I'm going to add these two enums into my namespace. So the first one is rating, and the second one is experience, and I'm going to do them a little differently. For the rating, I'll assign the names that I want to use for my enums, but I will also associate those with actual int values. With the experience, I'm just going to use these names. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to make sure you're aware of how Entity Framework will handle both of these. One might be obvious, one might not be. So now that I have these enums available, I can go ahead to my properties and change the experience to, instead of using a string, I can make it use an experience enum. And with rating, instead of using an int, I can make it use a rating enum. And I'm going to remove my data annotations with a range. I'm going to define the range within the enum. Right now my range is 1 to 3. So the rating enum is already providing that limitation for me. I'm removing the string length for a different reason. I'm not actually working with a string now with experience. Experience is an enum, so we'll see how that works out. Now I have to go to my constructor and change that. So I'm using rating.good, and instead of putting the newbie string, this kind of, kind of a random string there, right? Uh, I'll be able to use my enumeration. So that's all good. That's all I have to do to my class because by convention, code first will understand what to do with these enums and how to build them into the model. Now, although I'm not going to bother demonstrating this, you can also specify enums when you're using the designer. So there's a little bit of a different way. It's not a straightforward .NET coding because you need to have a way to make sure the model actually understands about those enums. In this scenario where I'm using code first, code first will take care of making sure the model understands what to do with the enums. So that's all I have to do to the class. Now the next thing that I think I want is to make sure I switch my projects from using Entity Framework 4.3. And you can see if I go to the Entity Framework reference here, it's version 4.3. I want to pull Entity Framework 5 in. But there's something really important I have to do first. And this is specifically because I'm using a solution that was a .NET 4 solution, all right, because Entity Framework 5 can swing two ways. It actually provides a DLL that's version number is 4.4, .4, and that DLL will let Entity Framework 5 work with .NET 4. The only thing is you won't get the features that .NET 4.5 brings along, for example, enums. And it also has the version 5, and the version 5 will align with .NET 4.5. And I made a big mistake early on I pulled the new EF5 DLLs in by using NuGet, and NuGet said, oh, you're using .NET 4 target for your project, so you must want Entity Framework 4.4. <laughs> so it took me a while to figure out why things weren't working properly. Therefore, the first thing I need to do is take these projects and change the target framework to .NET 4.5.
Okay, I've actually just done that to the other two projects. No reason for you to watch me doing that again. So now I've added normal.net enum coding into my classes. I've made sure that all the projects in my solution are targeting .NET 4.5. Now I can bring Entity Framework 5 into my projects. Now normally when you bring in references that are available in NuGet, you can use the NuGet UI, but because this is a pre-release version, you won't see that DLL in this UI, so you have to use the Package Manager console for the pre-release. If you've used Package Manager Console to install Entity Framework before, this isn't much different. Install Package Entity Framework with one big difference, and that is I'm going to append this PRE, stands for pre-release, to the command. That way, NuGet understands that rather than having the most recent version of Entity Framework, I want the most recent pre-release version of Entity Framework. And as I'm doing this today, that's Entity Framework 5 Beta 2. So another thing I have to be careful of is making sure that I'm targeting the correct projects. And in my solution, console app and data layer are the projects that need Entity Framework 5. So I can see right now I'm targeting console app. And having done that, NuGet lets me know that it brought Entity Framework 5 Beta 2 in, it removed 4.3 from console application, and then added the reference to that new EF5 Beta 2 for me. And now I want to do the same for the data layer. And that's done as well. So now I'm actually ready to run my application. There's nothing else to do. I haven't made any modification in my context class or any more modifications than what you saw me do already with the regular domain classes. So here I'm just doing regular old .NET coding. Now I have a method in my console app which does nothing more than initialize the database. Since I'm using Visual Studio 2011 beta, I'm actually doing that on a clean machine. So I don't have a database yet. So I'm going to run minimal code to initialize the database. There's the minimal code. I'm just going to call initialize on the context. Since the database doesn't exist yet, code first will go ahead and create it for me. There's a little more cleanup I need to do, and that's simply because I'm using an application that I've pulled into Visual Studio 2011, but it was an app that I've already run. That app was using migrations as its database initializer. But since I don't have a database yet, migrations doesn't make sense. I have to start with one of the initializers that will create a database for me. So I'm going to go to the console app, and again, this was how I left things when I finished up the solution in that course, and that's why I'm just going to remove that. And also I want to point out that on this machine I didn't install SQL Server Express or SQL Server Standard or Professional or any of those versions. I'm relying on something new which is coming along with SQL Server 2012 which is called Local DB. It's even a lighter weight way of developing programs with a test database. So it's even easier to work with than SQL Express. When I added in the reference to Entity Framework 5, part of the script that was run by the command put this into my config files for me. What this does is it sets up the default connection factory that CodeFirst will use if I don't specify a connection string somewhere. So you can see it's going to use the local DB connection factory. So that's referring to the local DB and its version, the parameter value, version is 11, V11. So that's what Code First will use to build a connection string for me on the fly since I didn't provide one. When I installed Entity Framework 5 in the data layer, it created app config for me and put that same stuff in there, but I don't need oops, I don't need that in the data layer, so I'm just gonna take that out. I'll go ahead and run that initialization code and I'm gonna put a breakpoint here. Okay, so we got through there. The reason I put the breakpoint in was because I wanted to show some of the T-SQL that we can see in IntelliTrace. And if you look here, we can see that some T-SQL was run that created a table called aliases with all of these different columns in it. And notice there's experience and rating. They're both ints. Okay, that's, that's one of the things I wanted to make sure we pointed out, that they were ints. Let's go ahead and look at that database instead of just looking at the SQL code first used to create it. 
there's a new tool here, which is the SQL Server Object Explorer. And the experience of using the Object Explorer inside of Visual Studio 2011 is a lot more like the Object Explorer in SQL Server Management Studio. What we had to look at databases inside of Visual Studio in earlier versions, it was a little trimmed down, and I found myself always going to SSMS to see some really good information about my databases. So now I will go ahead and connect to the local DBV11 database, and I'll expand that. There's my new database, the code first created for me, and my tables, and here's the aliases table, and the columns. And the important thing here is there's experience and there's rating. They're both ints. So one of the things I know uh, people are surprised by sometimes is that even though I didn't specify numeric values for experience, Entity Framework has, behind the scenes, assigned numeric values to those. It's storing their values as numbers. And then in the background, Entity Framework will take care of going back and forth between the numeric values that are in the database and the enum values like newbie and ninja that we have defined in the enum. The next thing I want to do is add some data in. I already had this create new alias method in my program, so I'm just going to enhance it now to take advantage of the new values. So experience can be experience.ninja, of course. I mean, you know, I'm a ninja tweeter, right? And then uh, rating equals rating. Best. Why not? So I'm just doing .NET coding nothing special at all. Okay, so I've saved the changes and view data and so there's the row that I just inserted and if we scroll over to experience, experience is 2 and rating is 3. So rating is 3 is obvious because in my enum I defined best to be equal to 3. I never defined integer values for experience so this is the integer value aligned with ninja. So the way code first defined the integer values that go along with those enums is zero base. So the first one is zero. That would be newbie. So it's stored as a two. Let's see what happens when we pull it back out. Experience comes back to me as ninja, not as the value two. So all of that works behind the scenes just as we would expect. So there's one more thing I want to show you, which is using the enums in a query expression. I'll actually do a regular query expression, which would be from a in context aliases, where a dot experience equals, and I'll just use the enum. I added a little more code in there so I could execute the query with a to list. And here's the query as it went to my database. You can see there that the where predicate is asking for experience is 2, where 2 equals experience. So link to entities had no problem interpreting the enum into the value that code first is expecting. So that's just a very quick Julie style look, which means, you know, somebody else might have done that in two minutes, but I had to explain a lot more things because that's just the way I roll at the new enum support in Entity Framework 5. And it's really such a pleasure to not only be able to use enums when I'm writing Entity Framework code, but not to have to do anything special. I'm just writing plain old .NET code, and Entity Framework code first figures out everything that needs to happen to make the model understand how to use that, whether it's creating the database schema, or I'm querying, or I'm pushing data into the database. Thanks, Entity Framework team.